I want to talk with you about another theme in the movie, and that is a much more political theme. And it has to do with reckoning with the legacy of the Spanish Civil War, in which the fascists won, leading to a decades-long dictatorship of, 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 of Francisco Franco. How political was your family when you were growing up? Because you, you were born the year before Franco died. So you didn't live under his dictatorship, but your family did, and everybody older than you did. I, I was born in 74, and I mean, the rest of the 70s, too young to remember, but in the 80s, there was really like a feeling uh, in the air of like chains for freedom, freedom of, of expression, like what, what happened to me, and I don't say this because it sounds good because of my relationship with Pedro, this is very real. When I was in the 80s and I started to discover Pedro's films and watch some of his interviews, uh, not so much the part of the movida, you know, that I also didn't experience because I was very young, but to hear his message, I always saw him as much more than a direct, an amazing director, a genius director, but much more than that, because I I remember being very little and asking myself, feeling this man could be and should be our president. <laughs> you know, I would remember like being a little girl and, and seeing him also as some kind of political figure because it was so necessary to have somebody like that in those years that through art, and through his message was inspiring that freedom and, and those values. Yeah, uh, can I just interrupt and say that he was part of, he was a major part of what was known as La Movida, which was like the, the movement. And this was like after Franco's death, w w when artists were no longer going to be censored, there was this like outburst of new creative, lively art that, my understanding is, I know when I talked to Ant Antonio Banderas, who's also worked with Almodovar, he talked about how this this movement had like punk rock and sexuality, joy, color, LGBTQ characters, and Almodovar was famous for that. You know, he was one of the first filmmakers to to have LGBTQ characters being just people, not like this is this is a a problem or this is an issue. They were they were just like people in the film exactly and that's maybe what i mean by that that even if i was not part of the movida and movida was uh, a part of, of it was really crazy but there was something else behind it that was his message and what he was doing through his art that was like so respectful and inclusive and revolutionary you know for those years in 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 our country maybe just not in our country for the world to have somebody that speaks his mind like that and what he has done with women from the beginning their, their respect and uh, adoration to women the understanding of women because he had been raised by very strong incredible women the mother the sisters the neighbors and he has been observing them you know as a little kid always observing like the secret conversations and the 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 behavior and so i was a little girl, but I was picking up all those things in him. You wanted to meet Almodovar so badly. You wanted to be in his films. Um, you used to, when you when you were young, I don't know how old you can tell me, you used to stand outside of his home, uh, I guess hoping to catch a glimpse of him. Um, did you see him when you would, how old were you? Did you see him when you were doing that? And did he see you? Did he think you were a stalker? No, I mean, the first time, um, I was really obsessed with his films. So sometimes I would go to the cinema or to a, or to a bar, to a place, and I would say to my friends, you're going to see, we're going to see Almodovar today. I have a feeling. And they were like, oh, here you go with your like um, intuition thing, blah, blah, blah. And then he would walk in the door. And this happened like two or three times with him. But we would not talk because we didn't know each other and I was too shy to come up to him and say anything. And then 
he saw my first two movies and he called me and I was drying my hair at home and somebody told me Almodovar is on the phone. And I, of course, I thought it was a joke because it was such a particular specific dream that I've had for so many years. And they said, no, he is waiting on the phone, it's true. So I picked up the phone and from hello, I felt like, oh, this was my longtime friend that I had not seen in a while. And <laughs> we connected in an incredible way. He called me to go to his house to do, uh, to read some scenes for his next film, next film. But he told me I was too young because I was always lying about my age at that point, saying that I was older. And, and he said, I will write to you another character in, in another film soon. And he put it in writing. He gave me a letter, beautiful letter. And then he called me for Life Flesh. And Life Flesh, even if it was 10 minutes in the film, it opened so many doors for me. So in Almodovar's film, Pain and Glory, you play the mother of a boy who becomes an acclaimed filmmaker in Spain. And there's a twist on that, which I won't give away. It's a wonderful movie. And I want people to see the surprises in the movie as they unfold. But mothers so often figure into his films. And um, he seems to just have such deep emotions about mothers, and I assume about his mother. Did you meet his mother when you were playing his mother? No, because she was not with us anymore, unfortunately. But I met her many years ago when they were giving an award to Pedro and we all went to the ceremony with him. And and of course I tried to spend as much time as possible with her. And we were talking about Pedro and she started to cry, talking to me and she said that she was very emotional for how well things were going for him and for that award. And that she was terrified when Pedro decided to quit his job at the telephone company um, in the 80s because she thought that was really safe a path for him and that he was risking everything but that he was right and now he was happy doing all these movies and and, and I, for me that moment was such a gift you know to to hear those words from her it made me understand so much about his personality his charisma she was really funny a lot of his humor comes from her. She's so original. Like, you never know, knew what she was going to say. And it's the same with Pedro. You go to dinner with him, and it's like, he could say anything. Like, he was going to really shock you at some point, but he doesn't do it on purpose. Shock you, I don't mean in terms of like, oh my, no, in a very refreshing, beautiful way, because his humor is one of a kind. But uh, yeah, that moment that I had with his mother really helped me to prepare later uh, the role in Pain and Glory because I understood a lot about him and his childhood and, and, and his mom through that time we spent together. Let me reintroduce you again. If you're just joining us, my guest is Penelope Cruz. She stars in the new movie Parallel Mothers, which was written and directed by Pedro Amadovar. We'll be right back. I'm Terry Gross, and this is Fresh Air.